2626. Do it now. This has been the Next Generation in Futures, brought to you by ANCO Discount Futures. The preceding was a paid commercial program. Do you realize that there are hundreds of rapidly growing companies in America today? You'll find them in Investor's Business Daily. And by calling now, you'll receive the video cassette, The Real Secrets to Making Money with William J. O'Neill. And you get it free by calling Investor's Business Daily. Call now and get two free weeks of Investor's Business Daily, plus the free gift, all with no obligation. Get your free subscription and video by calling 800-253-8015. Do it now. TV Los Angeles. And now, this is Channel 22 Business News. And good afternoon to you. The time now 12.30. This is Channel 22 Business News at the bottom of the hour. I'm Laura Gregory. And stocks are a little changed again, still. Pretty familiar pattern by now. The NASDAQ is working its way higher, however, further into uncharted territory. This after closing at a record for the fourth straight session yesterday. Looks like the NASDAQ is well on its way to doing that once again. Higher by a solid 15 points at this hour, even as the Dow stocks are down about eight. Modest weakness seen in the bond market today. The price of the 30-year Treasury right now down about six ticks. We're yielding 6.49%. Yields on three-year Treasury notes fell in today's auction to the lowest level in six months. The bond market not responding really one way or the other. It's been weak all day long. Average yield was 6.041%. That's down from 6.438% at the last auction on May 6th. It's also the lowest rate since three-year notes sold for 5.997% on February 11th. Total of $16 billion in notes were sold out of bids that came to $39.3 billion. Tomorrow, the Treasury is auctioning off $12 billion in 10-year notes. This is the second tranche in its $38 billion refunding. Index of leading economic indicators unchanged for the month of June. Analysts were looking for a stronger showing, somewhere between one-tenth and four-tenths of one percent higher, as a matter of fact. Conference Board compiles this report, and they're saying that five out of ten of their indicators rose for the month of June. Also, just recently out, adjusted retail sales going up by three-tenths of one percent in July versus August. According to Red Book Research, that's up three-tenths of one percent. You may recall earlier in the day we've been reporting the chain store sales went up by a half a percent in the week that ended on August 2nd from the prior week, and that was according to BTM Schroeder's in their weekly chain store sales index. Some of the computer chip stocks like Intel, they're up sharply today. Merrill Lynch analysts saying that the fourth quarter for the group looks to be strong. Recent price cuts have apparently spurred demand. Big gainers include Intel, Texas Instruments. On the other hand, we have Aetna reporting second quarter earnings of $1.27 a share. That is dead on and not better than analyst estimates. Smith Barney cutting its rating on Aetna to an outperformer. Used to have a buy rating and they're pointing to disappointment with the company's earnings report. There was a sequential decline in Aetna's operating earnings for their health risk business and an increase in the health risk medical loss ratio. Now, trading in Aetna was actually delayed at the open today, and uh, that's the massacre that's happened since the open. Aetna is saying medical costs went higher in the second quarter as higher inpatient physician and pharmacy costs were only partially slowed by recontracting and intensified patient management efforts. Alice Brown raising its rating on Micro Warehouse, calling it now a buy. Used to have a market performer rating there. Companies reported second quarter earnings of 23 cents a share, and that's better than estimates of about 16 cents. It's also better than the 16 cents that actually earned in the year ago period. Merrill Lynch has started covering General Semiconductor. They've got an intermediate and a long-term accumulate rating here. And trucks drove Ford sales last month, the number two domestic automaker, enjoying a 5% gain in July sales from a year ago. However, the gain largely from sport utility vehicles like the Expedition and the Explorer. Ford's car sales declined by 5%. Lengthy strike by the Teamsters against the United Parcel Service may prove costly for the union as well as the shipping giant itself. It's estimated that a prolonged walkout could cost the union about $10 million a week in strike benefits. The Teamsters Treasury now has just under $7 million. Maybe there'll be a resolution sooner rather than later. Checking the street, the Dow Jones Industrials in the minus by about 8.5 points. 
puts the main quote at 81.89.86. We have the transports in the plus, however, by 16.13. A lot of spillover in the uh, transportation sector in this index. Uh, trucks and freight, as a matter of fact. Utilities positive by about a third of a point. We got volume coming up on 467 million shares. Stocks on the NASDAQ higher by 15 and a third as we speak, and curb stocks are up three and a third. S&P 500 in the September contract, positive by 335. Long bond in September down now by just two ticks. And also the cash bonds are coming off their earlier lows, down six ticks at 649. Bills in September weaker by a half exactly. Crude oil, September, up a nickel right now as gold in December is down 350. And closing there looks to be dollar index positive by 0.56 this report. And we continue in just a moment with a check of what's happened across those uh, futures pages and some commentary from the CRB on grain and soybean futures prices today falling sharply. And seven to the top of the hour, that's the Hollywood Stocks Report. Stay with us. <laughs> traders. The industry is changing and we're changing with it. You know, the days of just deeply discounted commissions, they're not enough anymore. What you need are value-added products. We offer to our clients free charting software and free option valuation software. Now that's not enough in itself. What about data for both those products? You get them absolutely free when you're a client at Ira Epstein and Company. To find out more about this, simply give us a call at 1-800-234-5044, 1-800-234-5044. Coming up on Channel 22 Business News, at 1 o'clock, Richard Saxton anchors the Closing Bell Report. At 1.07, Richard goes one-on-one -on -one with a studio guest, and at 1.18, he hosts a Futures Update. Then at 1.22, Richard and his guests get interactive by taking your phone calls. That's coming up on Channel 22 Business News. And now, the Futures Update, sponsored by Anco Discount Futures, California's largest discount commodity broker. Futures update on Channel 22. I'm Laura Gregory, where we have grain and soybean futures prices dropping today on the Chicago Board of Trade. The decline coming as rain and cooler temperatures moved into the Midwest growing areas, providing some much needed relief to the crops and boosting production hopes. National Weather Service is predicting that much of the country, and the Midwest in particular, is going to be wetter and cooler than normal through mid-August. And they say that could prove timely for the majority of corn and soybean crops that have now been slowly succumbing to hot and dry weather. USDA reporting after trade yesterday that the crop conditions were deteriorating in the past week. This was because of a lack of rainfall. With tight inventories for both corn and soybean, bumper fall harvests are needed to replenish supplies. Fields in Illinois and Iowa, the country's largest producing state, they've been extremely dry in a growing period. Meantime, wheat futures, they were in retreat. The weakness of the upper market too, and also a lack of export business. Also on estimate for a large total wheat crop. Here's what the rest of the futures pages look like as they're trading, as they're coming to a close. 